Hey there viewers. In an effort to make something good come of my uh, most recent engine swap, I decided to release uh, a few videos on timing the Mazda and Ford 2.0, 2.3, and 2.5 liter engines. Now I've timed a 2.5 and behind me is a 2.3, but based on a document that I have, uh, it indicates that the timing procedure is the same for both of those engines. And that also includes the 2.0 liter engine and the 2.3 liter turbo. So I'm going to be demonstrating how I timed my engine. And although, you know, I'm going to be showing you this video is for reference purposes only. And if you're going to time your engine, you need to make sure that you do your homework and consult the factory service manual or a professional um, before you do it so that you know everything is going to be done right. And beware, uh, damage to the engine can occur if the timing is set improperly. Now, uh, ever since I bought my first Mazda, I tried to understand the engines a little bit better and how to maintain them. And the very first thing that became apparent was that these engines were different. And the difference was in how they were timed and the fact that they had keyless crankshafts. And when you say keyless crankshaft, that means that everything is held in place. All of your timing components are held in place and that relationship between them uh, by friction. And when you say everything's held in, fr in place by friction on an engine, a lot of guys will just, you know, sort of recoil in just amazement and, uh, you know, will say, you know, well, that's, that's really weird or that's not very good. Um, so, you know, there's that sort of, I know, weird sort of character about these engines. And, you know, they're not the only ones. The mini engines are also friction and keyless crankshaft. So now these engines aren't unique. Um, but in an, in an effort to try to learn some more, um, I found that there's an incredible lack of information on timing these engines. And because of that lack of information, there's a great mystery surrounding them. And to give you an example of what that mystery is like, I've had three conversations with people over the years, and one recently, where people say, and I quote, whatever you do, don't take out the crankshaft pulley bolt, or don't take off the crankshaft pulley. And the way that they said it sort of, you know, made you a little bit scared. Along the same lines, just the other day in my crankshaft pulley timing fix video, a guy uh, made a comment saying, well, you should have never touched the balancer in the first place. So all of this conjures up the idea, at least in my head, and this is the sort of feeling that I've had over the years, is that if you take that crankshaft pulley bolt out, the whole engine's going to unwind and everything's going to go haywire. And, uh, you know, I, I kept thinking about those old Briggs pull starters with the big springs in them. You know, if you took those apart, the whole thing would just pop open and parts would spray all over the part, all over the place. And so, you know, I, in the back of my mind, I was kind of saying to myself, I hope I never have to time one of these things because it just sounds horrible, you know, like almost impossible. Um, and then I realized I was going to have to do an engine swap. And part of that engine swap meant that I was going to have to set the timing on the 2.5 liter engine that I was putting in my Mazda 3. And uh, I figured I could do the timing. I, I mean, I figured I could do it. But because of the lack of information and sort of that mystery, that myth operating in the background, I thought, I just don't want to deal with it. So I hired somebody to do it for me. And I watched him do it. And when he was done, I said, that's it? He goes, yeah, that's it. Um, so, and that was like a light bulb moment when I realized all of this stuff that people are saying and this lack of information, it doesn't mean anything because timing these engines is incredibly easy. All you need are a couple of special tools, which are cheap and easy to, to buy, and some patience and the procedure. And then to be honest with you, a couple of nice YouTube videos certainly wouldn't hurt. And that's where I hope, uh, you know, that's a void that I hope to fill. So I'm going to release uh, three videos. Well, actually, before that, let me tell you, I have two videos on timing out already. One of them is my timing fail video where I talk about understanding the timing and how tricky it can be. And then I demonstrate checking the timing in the car without pulling the uh, axle out of the passenger side. And then in my uh, crank pulley timing fix video, 
I show how to set the timing with the engine in the car. Now understand that I was under a lot of pressure when I made those videos. I had spent three weeks troubleshooting problems that didn't exist when all along it was the timing. So, plus it was the very first time that I, ever, that I had ever done it. So I was sort of double checking and going back and forth and sort of talking my way through it while I was making the video. So that'll probably come through if you watch them. But in the three videos that I'm about to release, the very first one is me running through the procedure very quickly to make a specific point. And that specific point is that there's one thing in particular that you can do when you're timing these engines that can throw you off. Unless you go back and verify the timing to make sure that you haven't run into that. Uh, now most of you, after watching that first video, will know everything that you need to know because it's, there's nothing complicated at all about what I am showing you or timing these engines. It's, it's really super easy. Uh, so most of you will only need to watch that first video. Now some curious professionals out there might find it interesting, uh, you know, because not everybody I've learned has seen these keyless crankshaft setups. The second and third video videos will be of me going into greater detail about the tools, how they fit into the engine, how to use them, and then me running through the proce procedure, showing you what to avoid, and then showing you, you know, the way that I think is best to do it to avoid having any problems. So. That's it. Uh, three videos coming. The objective is to fill that void, resolve the mystery, you know, stuff like the crankshaft counterweight flat spot coming up against the peg and, you know, all of that stuff. I'll show you guys all of that and I think it'll help you. And, uh, you know, I hope that it, it helps you guys avoid any future problems and any frustrations like the ones that I had during my engine swap. So, you can look forward to those coming out in the next couple of weeks. And, as always, thanks for watching.